Okay, how to make an eye. Um, first, keep in mind that the face, once we have uh, your eyes drawn in, which was the first step, that gives you an idea of where the eye sockets go. So the eye sockets are like caves in the face. And once we have that little cave, that indentation, um, that's where the eyeball is going to go. Now it is an eyeball that goes in the eye socket in the actual human head. Um, we don't need to put an entire sphere in there. We can put part of one. Um, so I'm just taking this little ball of clay and I'm going to set it in there and just gently press it in around the edges to keep it round. Because you do want the eyeball to be round, to appear like it is an actual sphere. I'm not scoring and slipping. You can if you want, but it's not necessary because we're going to make eyelids that hold the eyeball in place. Um, so there's my eyeball. Um, before I put the eyelids on, I'm going to give it a pupil. And let's see, I'm going to get make this guy looking a little bit to the right. And so this is a, a trick that Renaissance sculptors use. A little conical hole will create the illusion of a pupil and an iris because the light catches the edge right there. It kind of looks like an iris from a distance. So there's my eyeball with my pupil. And now I'm rolling little slabs. You see what I'm doing down here? Rolling little coils that are going to be my eyelids. So it's like a fat spaghetti coil. And then I'm going to start flattening it out. I'm just going to use my thumb. You could also use your uh, modeling tool to create, turn that coil almost into a little slab. Um, but you want to make sure that you have this edge that's all the same thickness because that's going to be the eyelid. Now we're going to do the bottom eyelid first. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve here just like an actual eyelid has and gently wrap it around the eyeball and then just kind of smush and smear, smush and smear. This is where if you have long fingernails it's going to be a pain in the butt. And try to touch the eyelid, that edge of the eyelid, as little as possible once you put that in there. So there's the bottom eyelid, and it's a little weird to look at right now until we add the top eyelid. So same thing. And also remember, if you look at the side of someone's head, the eyebrow sticks out further than the eyeball. So make sure your eyeball is in the eye socket far enough. So I'm going to flatten this coil. Straighten it out with my modeling tool. Now this is going to be my top eyelid. So again, I'm going to shape it, give it a little bit of a curve. And in the corner here, we're going to slightly overlap right there. I feel like this is a little too, maybe too wide. This guy's going to look tired. Um, where does the eyelid cross the pupil? Look at the person next to you, look at their eyeball, and tell me if you see their whole pupil, the whole outer circle of the pupil. You don't, unless they're bug-eyed and their eyes are really wide open because they're super surprised at something. So there's kind of the beginning, but there's one thing missing here. It's the fold, where the eyelid folds back into the eye socket. So I'm just going to use the end of my modeling tool to create that crease. And again, this what hap when your eyes are closed, you don't really see this. When your eyes are open, that's where the eyelid's folding back into your eye socket. So try to, again, touch this edge as little as possible, but I see I, I nudged it a little bit in the wrong place right there, so I'm going to slightly adjust it, but be real gentle with that edge. The less you touch that edge, the more alive your eye will look. So, when you're making eyes, another thing to remember is that um, you, know, you could make this eye a hundred different ways and all of them could be right. They're just different. 
There's so many different expressions that can come out of, of how you do the eye. And even now I'm adjusting the face. See, I can kind of stretch it a little bit or compress it a little bit to give different expression. Make sure you have some cheekbone showing right here. And this is the temporal bone. Refer to your uh, diagram of the skull. Make sure all these edges of the skull are showing through the skin. And again, check your, check your mug shots, check your skull diagrams. The reason you have that is to give you an idea of what's under the skin that's giving this the shape that it has. Okay? All right.